Okay, so I thought I'd try uh, recording not the construction of a whole sketch, but uh, construction of one feature. Uh, so Steve Phelps, uh, yesterday or the day before, was uh, posted a neat triangle dissection where he went from kind of one triangle to another triangle. And uh, I wanted to uh, kind of see what that was about, what the construction was. Um, so I played around and originally I made this point, uh, which is D, to be just kind of free on the on the one side of the triangle. And I made this point um, that divides up kind of the top triangle to be free also. And then I found that uh, the dissection moved the pieces around into a way that it fit, uh, but it wouldn't make another triangle. And so eventually I fixed D and G to be uh, where they should be to make it go from triangle to triangle. Uh, but now I'm thinking about how I want people to have the option of kind of seeing the way the dissection works uh, kind of once it's figured out or to play around with the placement of those points. So I was trying to think of the problem, you know, so how do I make a checkbox or a button that would either free or unfree uh, or fix, free or fix these points. And so I had an idea. I thought, well, what if I make one um, to be free on this segment and the other one to be fixed kind of at the proper location? And uh, having made this G, I'm going to try to redefine it um, so you can see the formula popping up about kind of where it should be. That's also then the definition of G1. So I want to change this de try changing this definition using a conditional to see if I can kind of make it choose between these two points. So um, I've never tried that before. Thought it'd be worth kind of recording to see how I do some of GeoGebra thinking. Um, from the viewpoint that Scott has suggested where we kind of document some of the sort of thinking. So I'm going to make a checkbox. And when that check box is checked, uh, free G. So I do want it to show G when it's free. Okay. And that Boolean is L. Uh, I wish it was a serif font so we could see these sorts of things easily, more easily. Okay, so now I'm going to try to change the definition of this. So it's there. Let me hide G1 and G2. And if you... Oh, I'm still on captions. So if you double click on the point over here, you get the, um, the definition box. And so I want to say if L It's G2, and if not, or else, it's G1. And uh, why I'm hesitating is I'm realizing that the point I want showing is actually G2, not G1. Okay, so let's see if that'll do that. Okay. Also, move G. So can I move G? No, it says, see, I can't move G. So G is not the thing I want showing. Object properties. So I'll get rid of this. And G2 is actually the one I want to show when L is selected. And, and then I will make it show uh, the caption instead of the name. All right, so with a free G, oh, that, H-J-I, so I've got to figure out maybe where these were defined again. Oh, no, that's right. So see, now when I put it over, it doesn't make a triangle anymore. But the um, 
vertices do line up here. That's because of how D is defined. So now I'm going to do the same thing for D. So right now D is defined as just a point on C. I don't think that's accurate. I can move it. Oh, I can. Uh, so I want... So let's make a D1. What did I do? I would like to be consistent. So the G1 is the fixed one. So I'll do this one fixed as well. So that's the midpoint of and B. And when D is here, okay. When D is here, that's when those top vertices line up. And D2, now if I had known I wanted this from the beginning, I could have designed it uh, a little differently. But this is often the case where kind of you make something, and I don't want to go back and have to redefine all these polygons. Um, so I want it to still be D. So I'll then kind of add a different layer underneath and then redefine the thing on top. So D2 is the free one, so that should be the point on C, which is the, the side of the triangle, the original triangle. And I don't need D1 or D2 showing, and I need another checkbox. And I want D2. That's showing. And then I want to redefine D. Oops, what's this Boolean? M. So if M, D2, and otherwise, D1. Okay, I'll change this one to I think I want D showing regardless. And I'll make this one show if not M. I think I like that idea for the G's as well. So I'll make this one show if not L. Okay, let's see if it works. So with D free, I can move it all about. H is the rotating point in this. And with G not free. Oh, I need to change the caption on there. Uh, now it should be one. Oh, it doesn't work right unless D is also at the proper point. Then we get triangle to triangle. This other checkbox was just to show kind of how much is rotated. Okay. All right, so that's how I added this layer to the uh, sketch and these new controls. I'll put them someplace nice. I guess the D should be about G. This is the obsessive compulsive aspect of it. All right, and start it out somewhere here. 
So, oh, D, I don't need to show anymore. So there are little black dots when they're fixed, and when they're free, So I'm thinking, so this is really picky, but I wonder if when the um, box is clicked or unclicked, whether that should make the, I don't, didn't like how the, the point jumped. So I might set, um, Move the free point. That was not the free point. Move the free point to wherever D is at the moment. Let's see if that works. So D is free. I move it down. I uncheck it. It's fixed. Now it's free again. I like that a little better. So I'll do that to the G as well. And then uh, the sketch is pretty much done. I'll upload it and uh, tweet it, <laughs> and uh, uh, I, thanks to Steve uh, for um, sharing this problem, and uh, to Vincent, who uh, I think got Steve thinking about the uh, hinge dissections. So anyhow, uh, that's this recording.